What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out an update to the add-on Materialic, which allows you to use their materials with the Blender Asset Browser and more. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so we talked about this add-on a few weeks ago. I'll link to that video down below. Um, it talks through the basics of using it, but basically what it is is it's a material library that allows you to quickly add materials inside a blender. And so um, there's a number of different options over here depending on the uh, resolution of materials that you want. So everything I show you is gonna be in the 4K. Um, I don't really need the 8K, some people might, but you can see how you can get different versions of this with different levels of materials um, for different price points. But um, what I specifically wanted to talk about in this video is they've added some new things to the tool, which I think make it even more valuable. And remember, I like this tool because this one isn't procedural. It's basically built on the PBR materials, and then it gives you options that make applying those things really easy. But let's jump over into Blender and take a look at some of these new features. Okay, so some of you might remember that when we looked at this the last time, the way that you applied materials using this tool was you had to use their asset browser, right? So you activate the tool, go to browse, and then you can use their asset browser in order to add materials to objects, right? So if you wanted to go find like a wood or something like that, um, you would select one of these materials and add it by clicking on OK. Right, and so that was fine, but it just doesn't really fit the Blender workflow in the sense that they've really been going in an asset browser direction. Well, the cool thing about this is they've now set up this new version where you can actually access all of the materials directly inside of the asset browser. So now if I wanna add something like uh, maybe a different wood floor, for example. So let's say we wanted to bring this one in. All you have to do is just drag it in from the asset browser right here. It will take a second to compile your shaders when you do this, but now it's in and it's ready to go. And you can see how even at 4K, these materials look really good um, and they render out really nice as well. And one thing I wanna note is um, to get the asset browser to show up, you do have to do some stuff that is a little bit confusing. Um, as long as you follow along with the documentation, you'll be fine. But basically what you wanna do is within their documentation page, which I can link to in the notes down below, you wanna make sure that you're reading the documentation for the newest version. And then you want to move over and you're getting started and click on the asset browser. That's going to show you how to um, use the material like assets from the asset browser. Okay. So right now they currently have this up where they have a mega add-on or something like that. Mega Dawn. Um, it's, it's another add-on that has to be installed in order to let this work with the uh, with the asset browser. So they're going to be get rid getting rid of this soon, but in the meantime, that's what you need to do um, in order to set up the asset browser. So first you need to install Materialic, but then, and uh, if you haven't installed this mega add-on thing, you can do that. There's gonna be a button in here that's gonna help you do that. But once that's installed, what you need to do is you need to click on the button right here and there's gonna be an option that says integrate into asset browser. And so what you can do is you can click on that and that's going to basically set those blend files as assets so you can use them in the browser. So there is an extra step right now, which I think they're looking to cut out in the future, but it is in there. So just be aware of that. Um, one of the cool things about this is these actually still link to the material like uh, editor right here which means that I can come in here and I can adjust the properties in the same way that I could before. So I don't have to go mess around with the shader editor or anything like that, right? I can adjust things like the diffuse and the roughness. So if I want this to be shinier, I can adjust that. Um, I can also adjust things like just the overall roughness or other values in here as well. And I can use, I can do it all from this menu right here without ever having to switch pages. One cool thing about this, and we'll go ahead and we'll add a different material. Maybe we'll add like a brick or a stone. So let's go find a brick or stone. So one of the cool things about this is these are basically set up where you can easily add displacement to them. So if I drag this onto this wall, for example, notice what this is gonna do is this is going to apply to the surface right here. Well, if I decide, first off, I can adjust the size, right? So we can go in here and we can adjust how big the scale of the material is just by adjusting this up or down. But then if you go down below, there's that option for adding displacement. So if I click on the displacement, it's gonna give me the ability to add a subdivision surface to the wall, as well as the displacement modifier and turning on adaptive subdivision. So when I do that and I click on okay, that's going to set this up where it has displacement. Now that's only gonna show up when you switch over into rendered mode, but notice how now I can come in here and I can adjust the strength 
of the displacement just by using this slider right here. So you can see how these bricks are now displaced on this wall. And you can do things like adjusting that multiplier too. You wanna to be a little bit careful with that obviously, but you can see how that does a really good job of quickly adding that displacement just with that single click. And so remember though, with any texture, um, the smaller it gets, the more it may repeat and the more you may see this tiling in here. Remember that this does have that tool built in to automatically set up the texture bombing. And so what the texture bombing is gonna do is it's going to kind of break up your texture so you don't see the tiling anymore. And you can adjust the size of that bombing as well as the rotation in here as well. So um, depending on the size and the scale of what you do in here, you're gonna get different results. But notice how you can use this so that it's going to break up your textures so that you don't have that, um, that repetition anymore. So it's also got a really cool tool built in for replacing materials. So if you go over here on the right-hand side, notice how there's an option for replace materials in the polygonic uh, window. You can just click on this and you can go find whatever that material is, right? So in this case, I've got this wood 660 in here, and then I can set the replacement to whatever I want. So in this case, maybe I wanna set it to maybe this uh, laminated veneer or something like that. And I'm not gonna do only selected, I'm gonna uncheck those and leave it for everything. I'm gonna click on okay. Well, what that's gonna do is that's gonna go in here and that's gonna replace that material everywhere. So this quick replacement can be a real time saver. They've also added new materials into their library as well. So um, they're continuing to add new materials um, and new categories in this add-on. So I'll link to the video I did with the introduction to this add-on if you wanna learn more. I'll also link to the add-on on this page. But leave a comment below, let me know what you think. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.